Welcome back. In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of rational expressions and rational functions. A rational expression is essentially a fraction. So we are dealing with fractions here. It's defined as an algebraic fraction or a quotient of two polynomials. Well, but as you'll see, sometimes we'll have um, we'll express this as two monomials. However, in a rational expression, the denominator cannot equal zero. So some samples of rational expressions might be something like 2x plus 3 over x plus 7. Those are both polynomials. Or x squared minus 9 over x plus 3 quantity squared. So we have a difference of two squares divided by a perfect square trinomial there. And as I mentioned, you'll see these as monomials as well. So you might see something that ends up as 2x over 3y. A rational function is simply a rational expression in function form. So we could have our function named f, f of x, so our function f in terms of x, 2x plus 3 over x plus 7, or y equals 2x plus 3 over x plus 7, but this is in function form. And we could have, you know, g of x, different name. Our function now is named g, our variable is x, x squared minus 9 over x plus 3, quantity squared. The domain of any rational expression or function. So what is the domain? The domain is all real numbers except those that make the denominator equal to zero. As you know in a fraction, we don't want the denominator to equal zero. Any input that makes the denominator equal to zero is an invalid input and should be excluded from the domain. The domain is the valid input. So we want to make sure we exclude any input that makes the denominator equal to zero. So when calculating the domain, we don't really worry too much. We don't worry about the numerator at all. We only are concerned with the denominator. So we solved quadratic equations earlier and we set them equal to zero. So now looking at this denominator, we would factor the denominator, x squared minus x minus six, which factors to x minus 3 times x plus 2. And we used to say, well, we want to set that equal to 0, but we do not want that to be equal to 0. x minus 3 times x plus 2 can't equal 0. So now, instead of setting each factor equal to 0, we set each factor not equal to 0. So x can't equal positive 3 and x plus 2 can't equal 0, so x can't equal negative 2. These are the two inputs that would make the denominator 0 and thus cause our fraction to be undefined. So our answer, calculate the domain then, is all real numbers except 3 and negative 2. So we would leave those two out. Everything else is a valid input. We can simplify rational expressions or simplify fractions. We know that a times c over b times c is equal to a over b because anything divided by itself is 1. So c over c, we say those cancel. You'll see me write this as 1's quite a bit. They don't really cancel. They just become 1. So it's really a, time, a over b times 1. We don't show the 1. We say that the 1 cancels. This is known as the fundamental property of rational expressions. So that's the fundamental property. That's what allows us to cancel, okay, uh, like factors. So when we simplify a rational express, 
expression, our process will be to factor the numerator and the denominator. You saw in the previous problem, I factored the denominator. Okay? And in doing that, we're going to follow our rules for factoring. We're going to look for a greatest common factor. We'll take that out. We'll look for our patterns, difference of two squares, perfect square trinomials, and factor that. Or we'll look for a pair, an ordinary pair of binomial factors. And then if we can't do that, uh, if A or the coefficient on the quadratic is more than one, we can factor by grouping or we can do guess and check. And of course, as you've seen in factoring, sometimes when we think we're finished, we're not, so we have to go back and look again. Okay? And finally, in our simplifying rational expressions process, we have to be careful to simplify or cancel only common factors. Factors are multiplied. Factors are binomials, monomials that are multiplied, while terms are expressions that are added and subtracted. So we have to be careful to cancel factors and not terms. So let's take a look at some sample problems. We want to simplify this. So we want to simplify x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now, x squared over x squared, we cannot cancel that. These are terms. I have three terms that make up this trinomial. We may not cancel x squared over x squared. So as you saw, our process is to factor first. So we will go ahead and factor x squared plus 2x plus 3. So our numerator factors to x plus 3 times x minus 1. And our denominator factors to x minus 2 times x minus 1. And she smiles, so I have factored these correctly. Now we have factors that we can cancel. x minus 1 is a binomial factor. They're the same, so we will apply the fundamental property. Those become 1, and our final answer then is x plus 3 over x minus 2. And no, we cannot cancel x over x and call this 3 halves. Those are terms, so we are done. We'll simplify p cubed plus 1 over p plus 1. Again, the 1's don't cancel, and p cubed over p doesn't cancel either. You know, this is not equal to p squared. Okay, that would be totally incorrect. That would be canceling terms and not factors. Remember, we factor first. So let's factor p cubed plus 1. That is a sum of two cubes which we factor into a binomial times a trinomial. So p cubed plus 1, the cube root of p cubed is p, the cube root of 1 is 1, then we have to square p, so we get p squared, we square 1, and we get minus p plus 1. So I factored my numerator, my denominator is simply p plus 1, so now I have common factors. p plus 1 is a common factor. I can cancel those because they are 1. I'm applying the fundamental property. And my final answer is p squared minus p plus 1. That is my final answer. Our third sample problem, x minus 1 over 1 minus x. Uh, it would be incorrect to cancel the x's and cancel the 1's. What we're going to do here, these are opposites. x in the numerator, x is positive, 1 is negative. In the denominator, 1 is positive, x is negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a negative 1 out of the denominator. So I get x minus 1 over the opposite so if I factor a negative 1 out, my 1 becomes negative, my x becomes positive, all over x minus 1. So now I have x minus 1 over x minus 1. Those do simplify to 1, and so my final answer is negative 1, the opposite of 1. 
In our next problem, 4x minus 8 over 8 minus 2x squared. Again, we want to factor first. We should see a common factor in our numerator and a common factor in our denominator. And I am going to factor a negative 1 out of the denominator. So my numerator, factor that. I'll take the 4 out of there. I get 4 times x minus 2. My denominator, I'm going to take a negative 2 out of there. And I get x squared minus 4. And you may recognize that that's a difference of 2 squares. So let's keep working. 4 over x minus 2 all over negative 2 over x minus 2 times x plus 2. And now we can go ahead and cancel our common factors. Notice we're always factoring first and simplifying our common factors at the end. So x minus 2 over x minus 2 is 1. So they cancel, applying our fundamental property. And 4 over negative 2 is negative 2. So our final answer here would be negative 2 all over x plus 2. You could write it the opposite of 2 over x plus 2 as well. You might see that as one of your solutions. So that wraps up our introduction to rational expressions and we will see you in class.